hello you guys so i have been posting pretty frequently on my um faith-based youtube however um i do every once in a while just feel you know why not come and post on here so um today i actually um i just feel really strongly to share a word with you guys and actually this is the second time i've opened to this but it says here just open to this huh? all right we'll go here in a little bit to the park um so you guys i i happened on my bible study i know i said i was gonna share with you guys um more detail about that but i'm not going to share that um, actually for a few more days most likely so um but I still feel led to, um, I still feel like some people, they're hungry for the Lord, but they don't really know how to, they also don't know the Lord, right? And so that's where an accessory comes in. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing, but it also is a heavy thing for the intercessor because in order for that, just like Jesus interceded, right? Um, you have to feel all of the pain of who you're intercessing for or you can't truly intercess but um i keep opening okay so first of all i'm just going to um so jeremiah's prophecy to remnant first of all i am just going to explain to you guys how why that title speaks to me why it's crazy that i keep opening to this well i've opened to this for a second time um and why, why I do believe that God. So, I actually have an uncle, Jeremiah. But, um, he's not really much of a prophet. He's not really much of a, um, man to really speak on much, um, about God. Um, he's more of just a regular type of man. Um, however, I don't, so I don't think that it's something that he actually, so for the, to say that, I don't think it's something that he's actually prophesied. Um, I'm just saying how this connects to my life, but I would say that his life has spoke volumes and what I mean by that is that his daughters right his daughters he has two daughters that he that he's currently raising and they live with him and you know they're not yet moved out but um they have such a peace right um i would very much say they they shine i would say i would say they're prosperous though most of them and the one thing about my uncle is that he has moved away he's moved away from the chaos right um and i think it's really been out. it has really been out of wisdom um it really has been out of wisdom okay so much wisdom now i will tell you something else my mom thinks that he's so stuck up for that constantly 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 i've heard nagging over the years nagging um you know that quote unquote he just doesn't want anything to do with anybody um 
Okay, Gilly, you're gonna break your your toy. Don't do that. So, so much misconception. And I think it reminds me of the story of Esther. Because I think how he's lived his life is a prophecy. I don't, I, don't, I think it testifies to the Lord, um, even if he never speaks about the Lord, right? They may have something in their home that says blessed or something like that, but they don't speak on the Lord. They don't, they're not church goers. They're not your typical, um, you know? So, the thing that testifies most is that when you yeah, when you truly want something, you will do it. It's not something that you're going to be lukewarm about. And so, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get into this little chapter. Um, now... Just, I turn the page and I see verse 16 that I feel led to share. We'll see if we go on to um, read any more of this chapter. I have a feeling we may read something from 42. I think we're going to read 16 and 41 and we're going to read 18 and 42. So, sorry, I thought the video cut off. That's why I looked up weird. Um, then took Johanan, the son of Korea and all the captains of the forces that were with him. All the remnant of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, from Mizpah, after that he had slain Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, ah Ahikam, even mighty men of war, and the women and the children and the eunuchs whom he had brought again from Gibeon. Okay. Um and then we go over to 4218. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as mine anger and my fury hath been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you. When ye shall enter into Egypt, and ye shall be an execration and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach. And ye shall see this place no more. I think so much in this. So this is actually just going to be on YouTube, guys, because it's gotten way too long. But um, actually in this season, I just feel so much of the hypocrisy. I feel so much of I'm going to bless you, so-called, but only if it's benefiting me. And that is not true. That is not truly like Christ. And I'm just putting this out there. Um, you know, I feel like some feelings may be hurt about this, but it's the truth and for people that claim to believe in the bible the truth sets us free it sets us free so that's that um in this little journaling that i was doing this morning i was talking about people that are abusing their comfort right and they're claiming that it's from god but god resists the proud and so um with this with that that i just read to you guys the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy, the, hypocr the hypocrisy, um, so much hypocrisy and you know, people, they like to not, they don't like honesty, right? They like to be in their comfort and they like to cling to their feelings, right? That is natural without the Holy Spirit. That is how humans are. And that is just that it's, there's not, there's nothing else to it. So with hypocrisy, excuse me with hypocrisy you know in this season seeing so much hypocrisy it's so much of you know it's just like having the fake tree and putting lights on it right but it just isn't a real tree you know it's it's like you can decorate it all you want you can dress it up all you want you can sing around it all you want but if it's not real no amount